Welcome back to SnowRunner. In this video, I'm going to be giving you 20 tips I believe you need to know, but there's going to be one bonus tip at the end, and I'd say that's quite important as well, so make sure you stay to the end of the video. And to start this off, we're going to go with how to winch to other players when you're playing in co-op. It's a very simple thing if you know what to do, because a lot of the mechanics are actually kind of tough to figure out in this game. But getting the ability to winch to other players in co-op, all you need to do is pause your game. And when you're in co-op, I can't do it right now. There is a video on the channel if you don't understand it through me just talking. Then what you need to do is when you're in co-op, you will see where it says move up and down and back at the bottom of that menu there. You will see a button that says manage party is Y on Xbox. And then when you go into there, you'll see the players that are in co-op with you at the top right of the box. You'll see allow other players to winch to me and you'll have to press a button on Xbox that is right trigger. That's all you need to do and you will be able to winch to other vehicles. You will no longer get winch suggestion rejected. It will accept straight away and you can pull each other around. Number two, and that is how to use multiple vehicles at the same time. How to have more than one out of your garage. You can see I'm in my fleet star at the moment and I'm just going to pop the handbrake on. I'm going to disable the engine or turn the engine off. Then what you're going to want to do is go to your map and you're just going to want to find, if we go down to buildings, find the garage entrance. You click on it to hover over it, you press A to jump back into the garage. Then what you need to do is select the new truck, so if I get the car and marshal out. Then we're going to leave the garage and you'll see the ones I put over here to the right. We have our fleet star here, so I could literally drive to the end of this garage like parking lot type thing I could put up here put my handbrake on go to the map and then select my fleet star press a again and I'm in the fleet star that is how you switch vehicles and you can have multiple out at the same time next up tip number three also ties into using multiple vehicles at the same time but it's to make sure that you retain all of your vehicles so if I press up on my d-pad I recover this truck it's just going to sit in the truck. If I pop up the local map and I select my car and marshal, then I recover that one as well. You can drive to the garage as well, but you'll see that I have two vehicles out. So what you want to do is retain the vehicles by pressing X on Xbox, and that is going to put them into storage because that way you'll see them in this list. And then if you jump into co-op, you can actually use your trucks again. If you don't retain them and they're just sitting in the slots, like if I put the Fleet Star there, if I grab the car on there, if I put another one here, then when I go into a co-op session and I leave my single player, these three trucks I will not be able to use because they're stored like actually in this garage. They're not in, I'm going to say like a global storage. So just make sure whatever's in your garage, you're pressing X so that you retain them. And number four is don't go into random co-op lobbies that are playing in regions you haven't yet explored. If we go to the global map, so far in my own game, I have only discovered Black River. I haven't been to Smithfield Dam, Island Lake, Drummond Island. Then over in Alaska, I've only been to North Port. Me, Pete and Con have been playing on Con's game save. And when you play co-op, there is no single player progression for anyone but the host. So if I was to jump into Con's game, we've explored all four areas in Michigan. If we were working over in Smithville Dam and I didn't manage to retain my truck and then Con lagged out or something like that, coming back into single player into my game, because I haven't explored Smithville Dam yet, I won't be able to access my truck. So just be careful, as annoying as it is because I don't believe it should work like that, just be careful when you're exploring regions you haven't done in your single player. The next tip is do not start your game in Alaska. It was incredibly difficult. If you've seen the gameplay on the channel, you'll know what I'm talking about. Me and Pete were constantly getting stuck. And after playing the game more and getting more experience with driving and the different things available for our trucks and stuff, we were actually running Alaska, which is covered in snow and slushy mud and stuff. We were running it with the, I believe it was the GMC truck. It doesn't have all wheel drive and it's also using highway tires. So the tires are not suitable for that terrain. The truck doesn't have all-wheel drive capabilities, so it was an absolute nightmare. So don't start in Alaska. Make sure you start your game in Michigan because it's much easier. It's the easiest out of the three regions. 
Alaska being a medium difficulty and time me being the hardest. So just be careful and find out more about your trucks and stuff. I would definitely recommend all wheel drive, possibly differential lock, maybe even get yourself chain tires and bigger, thicker tires before you go exploring other regions. Moving on to tip number six, make sure you are exploring the areas before you do anything else. Before completing tasks and contracts, you want to go exploring and unlock all of the watchtowers because it reveals the map for you, minus like small areas like up here, the watchtowers didn't reach that far, but you don't normally need to access those areas. Through exploring, you can find upgrades, you can find yourself new tasks to do, you can also find yourself a garage in that area, and the exploring doesn't really take too long unless there's something blocking the road. The way I would recommend to do it is to jump in a scouting vehicle. If we go back into the garage, if you got the DLC, so if you've got the premium edition of the game and you've got the Khan 39 Marshall, that is amazing for exploration. If not, the game does start you with a Chevrolet CK 1500, which isn't going to be as good, but it's not going to be too bad. It's going to be the fastest thing to get you around. And besides unlocking new things and being able to see more of the map, you actually still earn XP for unlocking the watchtowers as well. It's also incredibly important because it will show you new routes that you can take. Tip number seven is to make sure you choose your path. This is going to be so important and it's going to be the difference between tipping or getting stuck and actually completing a contract or a task. When I say choose your path, if we use a very quick example, if I was needing to go to the farm and let's just say, for example, I didn't have this road that goes along the bottom explored. If I was to go up here through this dirt path, there's a much bigger chance that I'm going to get stuck. And then come down to the farm this way, I could get stuck very easily. So make sure you do your exploration, unlock the watchtowers as stated in the previous tip. And then all you've got to do is go this way around. And it's much safer, there's a lot less chance of getting stuck and tipping over your truck and stuff. And not only that, when you're choosing your path... You can set waypoints if you press your right trigger, and then you can set them as near or far apart as you want to. You can be really, really precise. They are unlimited. You don't get a certain amount of waypoints. And if you want them to be like dead on where you need to go, if you hover over one, you'll see a highlight, the one that you've already placed. If you hold down your right trigger, you can actually move that one around. So you don't necessarily need to delete a few if you've messed up on the placement of one. Tip number eight is to complete tasks before you do contracts. Contracts are like the main part of the game and they're going to earn you the most money, but tasks are going to be a lot more helpful. If you look at the contracts, for example, you've got Husky Forwarding and you've got the essentials and stuff. This actually requires you go to Smithville Dam. But if you right bumper along and you look at the tasks, you will have things like, where is it? Here, you'll have Fallen Power Line. And if you have a look at that, there's a fallen power line. You cannot get through that section of road. All you need to do is deliver metal planks and two concrete blocks to that area and you'll have that task complete. And trust me, it's a lot safer than, let's just say you've got to go up to this fuel station here and you're coming from the garage, ignore this road here. If you're coming down this way and then you have to cut through the farm, Right here on this corner, I got stuck, I tipped, I lost cargo, it was an absolute nightmare because it's quite a steep hill. Whereas if you go and do the task to like free the fallen power line, then you would literally drive all along this road here until you get to this turn here, go along the asphalt, it's going to be a lot safer, a lot easier to drive, and then you'd make your way up to the fuel station that way. So tasks are important to clear areas, and also, if you look here, you can see Mountain Bridge. This bit's inaccessible until you complete this task. And tasks actually re like sometimes require a lot less than what a contract would in terms of resources. For an example, to fix up this wooden bridge entirely, you just need to deliver two wooden planks from here. You can drive across this area up to there, and that wooden bridge is fixed, and you can actually access that area. Tip number nine is to use the map to find other vehicles you have available so that you can retain them and also track your contracts. So tracking your contracts, if we were to do the essentials, you could then activate it and you could start tracking. That way it's going to show you at the top right corner what you need to do. 
Also with using the map to find other available vehicles, if you look here, there is a Scout 800. And I haven't yet unlocked it, but if I drive up to that area, I know it's there because I've explored the map. I drive up to it and it's going to give me that truck for free. Then using one of the previous tips, I can select the Scout 800, recover it, retain it so that it's ready for other sessions. And then I can just jump back into the other truck I've used to go and unlock that. Some of them, like the... If we go down here, the Drowned Scout Truck, you don't unlock that. That's literally just a task to recover it for the person that you're working for. But there will be some vehicles like the Scout 800 up here, which will actually unlock for your personal use. So use the map to your advantage. It's very, very helpful. Tip number 10. When taking on tasks, use the map again to find a document in the world to accept the task and then continue because tasks don't automatically trigger. If we use the one down here as an example, you have one here called the place beyond the spruces. If you click on that, it's gonna tell you to go up to this like little mountain peak and it says scout is recommended, but if you just simply drive up there, it's not going to do anything for that task and you'll notice that you can't even track it. If we come along here, you'll see a little document that's pinpointed on the map and is going to be called the place beyond the spruces. If you come here first, not only will you be able to accept it so you can actually carry out that task, but you will also be able to properly track it. So if you're doing the place beyond the spruces, you would drive to here, accept the task, start tracking it, and then backtrack and make your way up to there. You simply got to drive into that area. That's some extra money, some XP, and that's task complete. Tip number 11 is to use your D-pad. It's so helpful in this game. You can winch, you can refuel, and you can repair. So if I press up on my D-pad, you can see that I can remove cargo, not that I have any on me. I can recover back to the garage. I can change my truck if I have others nearby. You can stop your engine, so when you're just sitting there waiting for something, you're not burning through fuel. You can attach a trailer this way. You can also attach your winch and then obviously if, if you have another truck closer or a fuel trailer then you can refuel and if you have something nearby that you can repair with you can also repair but if we back out of that menu quickly if i let's just say i look over here and i press y to winch it's going to automatically connect the winch to the nearest object the game finds suitable whereas if i didn't need to use that one if i press up on the d-pad and i manually attach the winch I'm not actually within distance to, like reaching distance to any other thing. If I move closer to this tree over here, if I press Y, it connects to there. And then if I look over here, it might connect to that tree there. But there could be something else like a little tree stump that's connected to like it's stuck in the floor or something. So if you go to attach winch and you use your D-pad to select the winch point, once we've selected that, you can see there's actually six different areas that I can grab onto. There's a tree stump to my right, there's a pole to my left, there's a tree in front of me, and there's a few other like bush sort of things. So again, once you've selected your winch point, you then use your D-pad again to flick through the areas you want to winch to, and then you can manually do it, and you, you get a better sort of idea of what you're grabbing onto and what's going to help you out the most because you can select different points not only does it select a random point just pressing y it also uses a default position on your truck and sometimes the left side might help more than the right tip number 12 garages completely refuel and repair your vehicles for free but trailers do not come with you when recovering to a garage. So either make sure your trailer is easy to reach again. You can see if we look in the garage car park, there is a flatbed trailer here. So instead of, let's just say we've delivered to the warehouse, instead of leaving the trailer there, if you want it more accessible, you can just drive it down and drop it off at your garage again. Or another thing you can do, if you don't want to be hauling trailers around because the reversing gets a little bit tedious and stuff, if you look at my truck, I actually have a sideboard like flatbed on there. These aren't too expensive, I can't remember how much I actually paid for this, but I can take the same cargo, so let's just say it was two lots of wooden planks. I can take two lots of those on this flatbed that's directly attached to my truck, and that way I don't actually need to purchase a trailer or find the trailer that will attach to the back, and I don't have all that extra... I'd say it does still add the weight, but I don't have all that extra sort of luggage behind me that I'm having to be careful of from tipping and stuff. You can see it all directly on your truck. Tip number 13, and I don't actually have any gameplay, I can't show you this one because I'm not currently doing a task, but when you're operating a crane, some of the tasks and contracts will require the usage of a crane. 
Make sure you approve the cargo in the trailer, otherwise co-op players can't see that cargo and they can't complete the contract or the task. I believe, because I haven't actually done this personally, Pete did it, but I believe once you've used your crane and let's just say you're putting wooden planks into the back of my truck, I wouldn't actually be able to see them or if I've got a trailer attached, I wouldn't be able to see them even when Pete's got them in there. So what you would need to do when you're operating the crane is I believe you'd press up on your D-pad and instead of remove cargo, you would have the option there to approve it. Once you've approved it, your friends or the other players in your co-op session can see it and that way they can drive it to where it needs to be dropped off and you can carry on completing your contracts and your tasks. Tip number 14 is to use the contract menu on the map, which is this one here, you'll see it says contracts. Use this menu to find out where you need to be and where you need to drop off your goods. For an example, if we're going to do, let's try and find one that's actually in this area. So this contract is called Pipe Dream and I need to deliver a heavy fuel tanker semi-trailer to the factory. So if I move down using my D-pad, I need to go to the fuel station to pick up that heavy fuel tanker semi-trailer and then I need to drive it up to the factory. Also, I need to go pick up bricks which I can grab from the warehouse and drive them up to the factory and I need to get metal planks so I'd go to town storage. Then I have to drive it up to the factory. You can do that with all contracts, you can see exactly where you need to go to pick things up and you can also see where you need to drop them off. Tip number 15 is to always check your map for pickup locations of resources as somewhere could be closer or more efficient but the game will not tell you. The only example I can think of off the top of my head for this is there would be a contract at some point where you would have to take, let's just say you're going to Quarry which is in Smithville Dam so I'd have to drive up to here and you're needing to go and get service spare parts. For the service spare parts, it's going to tell you that you can either go to the warehouse or you can go to the factory. I can't remember which one it is, but one of those areas will give you the service spare parts. I know from playing the game and having the experience that I don't actually need to go that far out of my way to go and pick those up. If I just grab my trailer or I use my flatbed and I go straight through to Smithville Dam, then round the corner from where it spawns you in, you will have a service hub and you can pick up the service spare parts from there and then you can drive down to the quarry and it's much easier, it's more efficient. You will see these little yellow icons, so this one's like a magnifying glass type thing. This one's a pickup. Then over on this side, this one at the factory is a drop off. So that's where you take things. Tip number 16 is to always make sure you are progressing your own game as well as your friends. Because a co-op game on SnowRunner only saves progression for the host of that co-op session. Let's just say you've gone into your friend's game and you've found the engine upgrade for your Fleet Star. If you have equipped that onto your Fleet Star, you've applied it, then when you go into your single player game, you'll still have that upgrade because it's on your truck. But if you don't have it actually on your truck and you go back into your single player game at some point, then you will need to go and find it again because it will say that it's still locked because you haven't actually found it in your own game. It's really confusing with some of the things and how it works. But just remember, it's so important to keep progressing in your own single player game as well because co-op only saves progression for the host. Tip number 17 is to make sure you sell your spare trailers that can be found around the maps if you don't actually need them. You can always buy them back at a trailer store, so don't worry about it too much. So if we actually back up, if we go back into this garage area and you will see that I have a trailer on the right hand side. There is some cargo in there, but that doesn't matter too much because I can just go pick it up if I need to. So this trailer, if I get a little bit further away, if I attach it, is now stuck to my truck. Now if I take it literally right here to the trailer store and I hover over flatbed trailer, I can sell it. Cargo will be lost, do you wish to proceed? Yes I do. So I've now just got the money for that. And then if I ever need to buy that back or I need to buy a certain trailer, just visit a trailer store and you can buy them all back. You'll get exactly the same amount of money for selling them as you would spend for buying them. So you don't lose anything. It just clears up the map as well because if we look over here, we have a sideboard trailer there. Then down here, we have a fuel carrier trailer and they can be useful to be located around the map but a lot of the time you won't actually need them so any trailers you have on the back of your truck if you need the extra money then you can sell them and don't worry about it because you can buy them back for the same price at a later date 
Tip number 18, when driving your scout vehicles, make sure that you buy the winch that allows you to upgrade it whilst your engine is off, as if you flip, you don't have to recover back to the garage. I've done it about 20 times just in this Khan Marshall, and when you have the basic standard stock winch, and you tip, it will stall your engine, your engine's off, you can't use your winch. If we go to customize, and we go to the winch, I have the autonomous scout. A low strength winch set up with a dedicated battery unit, not as powerful as more common variants, but can operate even when the vehicle's engine is turned off or stalled. So if I flip onto my side, my winch has a battery unit in there, so it can still operate whilst the engine's off. Then as long as you have a tree or a tree stump or something in your like vicinity, then you can winch onto it and you can pull yourself back over. It saves a lot of hassle of having to recover to the garage and start your journey again. Tip number 19 is to not worry about upgrades, as you can sell them when you are done with them. So for an example, I've got the Autonomous Scout at the moment. If I go to the Stock Scout and I want to buy it, it will equip, and then I have this one. You'll see at the bottom right, I can sell it. So if I do go and sell it, you'll see that I get 9,400 for it. So remember 9,400, I'm going to sell it. It costs exactly the same amount to buy it back. So I would then buy the Autonomous Scout for 9,400, then I paid $1,000 to get the stock scout. I go into that menu, get $1,000. So you can sell all of your upgrades for as much as you pay for them. So if you find one and you don't want it on your truck, like you find one through exploration of the open world, and you don't need to use it on your truck, you can just sell it. It's going to be a fast way to get money, and you can buy them back whenever you want to at the same price you got for selling it. Tip number 20, if you are running low on fuel and someone is on a contract with you but there's no fuel station or anything nearby, you can always borrow some fuel from them, sharing is caring, and every truck can refuel yours. To show you an example, I'm driving my Fleet Star and I've only used one litre but if I had used loads, stop near to the truck that's got some fuel that you can borrow, up on your D-pad, refuel, then make sure you're selecting your target to be the truck that you're currently driving, then you would fuel up and it takes one litre out of the Khan Marshall and it puts it into your truck. There's been a few times running like very steep hill contracts and stuff where I've actually run out of fuel and I've needed Con to come along and drop me some off and doing it that way, you don't actually need to carry a big ass like fuel semi trailer on the back of you. So that is the 20 tips, but I do have a bonus one that actually took quite a while figuring it out. If you look at the top of the screen, it's just gone from night time to morning. Each in-game hour, it takes roughly around 3 minutes real life time. It's, it's about 3 seconds per in-game minute. So 3 minutes of real life time per in-game hour. That means that each in-game day takes roughly 1 hour 12 minutes to cycle. Each time frame in the game, you have 4. You have morning, afternoon, evening and night. They last a different amount of time. Night time is from midnight until 6am, which is 18 minutes real life time. Morning is from 6am until 1pm, that will last 21 minutes. The afternoon in the game runs from 1pm until 8.30pm, which will take 22 and a half minutes real life time. And the evening in this game is incredibly short, it's only from 8.30pm until midnight, that will last 10 and a half minutes real life time. So that was a 20 plus 1 tips for SnowRunner. That I believe you need to know, they are so important, they're going to help out with everyone's experience on this game, co-op, and they also work in single player too. So that's going to do it for the video, let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments, I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope it helped you out, thank you for watching.